Lord, we thank you right now for your grace and for your mercy. We thank you, Lord God, for the opportunity, Lord, to be able to come and share the word of God, to hear the word of God. We pray, God, right now that your power and your anointing would be with us and that your spirit would have its way even in our lives right now. We pray, God, right now that you would send strength. We pray, God, right now, Lord God, that your spirit would begin to let healing take place throughout the land. In the name of Jesus, all across, Lord, this world, let healing take place in the name of Jesus. God, you're able to speak a word to cause this virus to cease. And God, you're able to turn it around, God, even overnight. We seek your face because you are our hope. We seek your face. God, because you are our strength, we seek your face, God, because, God, we are absolutely nothing without you. We pray right now, God, that you would give us ears to hear what the Spirit is saying unto the church. We bind the adversary on every side. We take authority over every spirit that may try to come against, Lord God, the word of the Lord tonight. We rebuke the adversary. Give us ears that hear. God, give us a mind that comprehends. And Lord, give us, Lord God, the strength, Lord, to apply everything that is preached through your word in the name of Jesus. We look forward, God, to meeting together again as we normally do in the name of Jesus. We speak this right now. We believe this right now. In Jesus' name, we pray in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. And everybody said in Jesus' name by putting some hearts on the screen. If you can hear me, amen. Uh, if you can get in contact with those that are on YouTube, we are, amen, still trying to get live here. I have a spinning wheel, amen, that does not want to act right tonight. And so we're going to push forward and uh, as much as we can, amen, on tonight. Um, uh, I want to start by saying thank all of you for being faithful uh, in this time. It is, amen, very important that we stay uh, connected and that we hear the word of the Lord, amen, in this time and in this hour, amen, that we are living in, amen. God has been so good to us. Uh, he has been keeping us, blessing us, and helping us, and I'm believing God to continue to keep us, to bless us, and to help us, amen, and that should be your hope. That should be, amen, as well, amen, that we should be praying that God Amen. Opens doors. Amen. So that we can uh, be back together again. Amen. We started, amen, a series a while back uh, on wisdom. And we're going to talk tonight, amen, and hear the word of the Lord tonight concerning the same thing tonight, picking back up on walking in the wisdom of God, walking again in the wisdom of God. What exactly Tonight we start with what exactly is wisdom? What exactly um, is wisdom? Um, because there's also uh, multiple kinds of wisdom. There is worldly wisdom and there is godly wisdom. Amen. Uh, the Bible tells us in the book of James, it's going to be important tonight that you have your Bibles with you. If you don't, amen, please uh, try to get your Bible and have it with you tonight. The book of James uh, uh, chapter number three, verse number 12, amen, ver to, through verse number 18 says, can a fig tree, my brethren, bear olives, either a vine, figs, so can no fountain both yield salt water and fresh. Who is a wise man and endued with knowledge among you? Let him show out of a good conversation his works with meekness of wisdom. We heard that with, with meekness of wisdom. But if you have bitter envy and strife in your hearts, glory not and lie not against the truth. This wisdom not is not from not from above. This wisdom descended not from above, but is earthly, sensual, devilish. For where envy and strife is, there is confusion and every evil work. But the wisdom that is from above is first pure, then gentle. Then peaceable, gentle, and easy to be entreated, full of mercy and good fruits, without partiality and without hypocrisy. And fruit of righteousness is sown in peace of them that make peace. Amen. And so what exactly tonight is wisdom? So there's two types of wisdom. There's devilish, amen, wisdom. It's sensual. 
and it does not uh, come from above. This type of wisdom, amen, talks about envy and strife and confusion and evil work. This is why you have to be careful, church, who you receive advice from, uh, who you are lending your ear to when it comes to wisdom. Uh, wisdom, amen, is something that should not be taken lightly. Uh, what exactly then is wisdom? Webster says that wisdom is accumulated uh, phil philosophic or scientific learning, accumulated philosophic or scientific learning, knowledge or insight, good sense, uh, a wise attitude or course of action. Now, the working definition of wisdom is the ability to make good choices. It is the ability to make good choices. The wisdom of God, amen, will never make you look foolish or make a fool out of you. I'm going to say that again. The wisdom of God will never make you look foolish, neither will it make a fool out of you. Many times this is very important in the church because people use scripture out of context and make themselves look foolish by doing so. Biblical wisdom, I'll tell you this, is not proud and is not arrogant. It's not using God's word to bring attention to one's self or to glorify oneself. Only humble people handle God's word correctly so that it brings glory to God and not attention to themselves. Let me say this when it comes to, amen, using the word of God wisely because you can use the word of God unwisely. I have seen many other times uh, people use the word of God to justify themselves but use the word of God out of context. And for many of you, amen, you have to remember that the word of the Lord, amen, is not just one particular scripture, but amen, the context of the scripture, amen, which gives you an interpretation of the scripture. And let me say this when it comes to the word of the Lord, amen, we have to be very, very careful, amen, because all publicity is not good publicity when you're trying, amen, to glorify God, amen, disobeying one part of the word because, it benefits you in one aspect, it, uh, but but does not, amen, glorify God in that aspect. That is not wisdom. And let me say this. It only takes, amen, it, it, let me say this. It not only takes study to rightly divide the word of truth. It also takes wisdom to rightly divide the word of truth. I'll say that again. It does not just take study to rightly divide the word of truth. It takes wisdom also to divide the word of truth. Application of the word, where and when it is not needed, can cause negative side effects. Let me say it again. Application, if you apply the word in an aspect or in a place where it is not needed, there can be negative effects. It is, it is study and wisdom that keeps this from happening. Wisdom teaches you not to become addicted to feeling and to responses more than you do results. Wisdom teaches us not to become addicted to feeling and response more than we do with, with, with results. Why? Because wisdom tells you that in life, feelings and emotions are immediate, but growth takes time. I'll say that again. Wisdom tells you that in life, and, and this is for somebody right now that's waiting on God to do something in your life. Amen. You cannot go by what you feel. We have a lot of people, amen, who who, who go overboard because they feel a certain way. But if you are a wise individual and you are walking after the wisdom of God, this wisdom tells us that feelings and emotions always come immediately. Amen. They come and they go, but growth takes time. Listen, we plant seeds. We don't microwave seeds. Can I say that again? We plant seeds. We do not microwave seeds. And anything that we plant takes process and time to be made manifest. Can I say that again? Anything that's planted takes a time of process, amen, to, for it to be made manifest, amen. So wisdom tells us that with patience, we possess our souls, but also with patience, we receive whatever promises that God has given unto us, amen. We are a living in a generation that wants everything right now. They want everything right now. Amen. But here's what we cannot do. Amen. We cannot get so emotionally fed into what's not happening that we don't have enough wisdom to wait on God to do it. And so it's important for us to understand and to have wisdom in every area of our life. The Hebrew word 
uh, that is translated as the English word wisdom appears actually 141 times in the Old Testament. And most occurrences of this word are found in Job, Proverbs, and Ecclesiastes. Wisdom from the Hebrew is the knowledge and the ability to make the right choices at the opportune time. I'm going to say that again. It is the ability to make the right choices at the opportune time. The consistency of making the right choice is an indication of your maturity and your development. I'm going to say that again. You being consistently able to make the right choices is an indication of maturity and development. Amen. You want to know how mature you are? Amen. And if you're walking in wisdom, amen, it's going to be from a consistent lifestyle of you making right choices, no matter how it feels, no matter what it might cost, though that's what's called walking in wisdom. Now, I'll show you this according to Proverbs chapter number one and seven. There's a prerequisite for wisdom. All right. There's a prerequisite for wisdom. All right. The prerequisite for wisdom is the fear of the Lord. Proverbs 1 and 7 says the fear of the Lord, all right, is the beginning of knowledge, all right, but fools despise wisdom and instruction. I'll say it again, all right, the fear of the Lord is the beginning of knowledge, but fools despise wisdom and instruction. Wisdom is viewed as crying out, amen, for disciples who would do everything, amen, to pursue her wisdom. Is, is viewed in, the, in, in Proverbs as crying out. Wisdom is crying out for disciples who will do everything to pursue her, that to pursue her, to pursue wisdom. Amen. It, it, it's very important to pursue wisdom. The person who seeks wisdom diligently will receive understanding according to Proverbs 2 and 6. I'm going to say that again. The person who seeks wisdom diligently will receive understanding according to Proverbs 2 and 6. And I told you that primarily we'll be looking at the book of Proverbs. Proverbs 2 and 6 says, For the Lord giveth wisdom. Out of his mouth cometh come knowledge and understanding. Amen. Wisdom does not come with, does not come uh, to you without understanding because to do something again without having of understanding of why is not wise anyway. So godly wisdom comes with an understanding. The Bible tells us with all of your getting, get an understanding. God gives us an understanding of why we should do, amen, what he is telling us to do. It is also the responsibility of the man or the woman of God, amen, to make sure Amen. That they are following the word of God and studying the word of God and rightly dividing the word of God. Amen. So that the word of God is not blasphemed among them who do not believe in God. Amen. And so then, so wisdom again, for the Lord give it wisdom out of his mouth come it knowledge and understanding. All right. He will benefit in his life by walking with God. An individual will benefit in their life by walking with God, according to Proverbs chapter number two, verse number 20. It says that thou mayest walk in the way of good men and keep the paths of righteousness. What's the advantages of wisdom? There are many of them. Proverbs chapter number three and uh, verse number two through four says for length of days and long life. And peace shall add, shall they add to thee. Let not mercy and truth forsake thee. Bind them about thy neck. Write them upon the table of thine heart. So shall thou find favor and good understanding in the sight of God and man. Let me say this. Wisdom, walking with God and walking in the wisdom of God, should not make the church an enemy with everybody. See, it's not wise. It's, we're not wise Amen. When we use the the word out of context, amen, to uh, try to make us, amen, seem, amen, as if, amen, God did not save us or God does not want us to save the world and to win the world. The Bible tells us to follow peace with all men. All right. All right. All right. Follow peace with what all men and holiness for without which no man shall, she, shall see the Lord. Wisdom says, amen, that when I walk as God walk, I don't make a whole lot of enemies. 
And what a lot of people do, you they make a whole lot of enemies because they don't have no wisdom. I remember as being uh, as being young, amen, young in God, had just got the Holy Ghost fresh, born again of water of spirit, man. And everybody that I would find, man, I would eat them up with the word. I mean, I would tell them with no, with no tact, no wisdom, no nothing, cut and dry, you going to hell. I mean, whatever it was. And I couldn't, I couldn't win a soul. I couldn't buy a soul because I was too hard. Amen. With, with, with what I had. And it wasn't that what I was saying was not true. It's not that I didn't have truth. It's not that I didn't know a person should repent. I didn't know. It's not that I didn't know a person should be baptized in Jesus name, filled with the Holy Ghost. Amen. It wasn't that I didn't know that they should not do certain things in their life, that they should live holy. But what, what happened was I had all of that knowledge but no understanding and no wisdom. All right. I had all of that knowledge, but did not have wisdom and understanding to help me to apply it the way that I should so that I can be effective. Amen. No matter how much you know, if you apply it in the wrong way, hear me when I say this, if you apply it in the wrong way, amen, you can, it will not have effect. It will not have effect if you apply it at the wrong time. There's no sense in you using icy hot when you're not hurting. If you keep putting it in one spot that you don't have pain in, sooner or later, something's going to happen in that spot because there is no use for it. And what we have to learn how to do is rightly divide the word, but also use the word and also do things in our life at the right time. Somebody say at the right time. It has to be done at the right time. Amen. So then it's important. It's important. The prerequisite of to, to wisdom is a desire to follow and imitate God as he revealed, as he revealed himself in Jesus Christ without self-reliance and especially not in the spirit of pride. You cannot walk after God and walk after God in the spirit of pride. Proverbs chapter number one, verse five through seven says, a wise man will hear. Hear this now, a wise man will hear and will increase and will increase learning and a man of understanding shall attain unto wise counsels. Let me tell you something. You're not wise, not seeking wisdom. <laughs> I'm going to say that again. You're not wise, not seeking wisdom. And, and some, some folk think they know everything, but a wise person, right? A wise individual, amen. They understand, amen, that they don't know everything. The Bible tells us that in the multitude of counsel, there is what's called safety. A wise individual, amen, attains to wise counsel. Why do they do this? To understand the Proverbs and the interpretation, the word of the wise and the dark Sam, the fear of the Lord, here we go, is the beginning of knowledge, but fools despise wisdom and instructions. So the importance of wisdom explains why so many people try to write books about wisdom. There are songs composed about wisdom. Wisdom is even personified in the books of Pro book of Proverbs. If you know the right thing, you are intelligent. All right, I'm gonna say that. If you know the right thing, you are intelligent. If you know the right t thing and choose to do it, you are wise. Again, if you know the right thing, you are intelligent. If you know the right thing and choose to do it, you are wise. The social media will tell you all the right things to do. But everybody that's telling you the right things to do are not wise because the majority of them don't do what they're asking you to do or telling you what was wise to do, what, what they feel is intelligent for you to do. It's important then that we don't just be people that can give wisdom or give instructions or tell people the right thing to do, but not follow those things ourselves. So what's the benefits of wisdom? Number one, wisdom will give you the right perception. Wisdom gives you an accurate perception of life. In Proverbs chapter number two, verse number uh, uh, nine through 10, it says, then shall thou understand righteousness and judgment and equity, yea, every good path. When wisdom entereth into thine heart and knowledge is pleasant unto thy soul. Y'all hear that? When, when wisdom enters into your heart and knowledge is pleasant unto your soul. Today's English version Bible reads that particular scripture this way. It says, um, number one, it says, if you listen to me, this is wisdom talking. You will know what is right, just and fair. You will know what you should do. You will become wise and your knowledge will give you pleasure. 
Can I read that again? If you listen to wisdom, you will know what is right. Saints of God, we got to go back to praying and seeking God for wisdom in every situation and every circumstance. Just because you feel something is the right thing for you to do, amen, does not mean that it is the right way God is the right way God wants you to do it. His ways are not our ways. His thoughts are not our thoughts. His judgments are not our judgments. And if and and many times I hear folks say, "Oh, I went by my first feeling," or "I went by how I felt." Amen. Listen, my feelings and my emotions have got me in a whole lot of trouble before, and it will do the same thing to you. You have to seek God so that God can give you the right perception of every situation and every circumstance. Because guess what? Things happen to you at the worst times. Things are coming your life at the worst time. And you will respond and regret your response later. How many people have said something and regretted it later? How many people have responded and reacted and regretted it later? It's important. It's important for you, amen, to know how to Calm down. Get out of your feelings. Wait until your emotions settle before you act and respond. Find a place to pray and get the wisdom of God concerning every situation and every circumstance. Why? Because if you do not, you will live life with regrets and you will find yourself on the end of being sorry or apologizing every single time. Amen. Because we, you have not learned the lesson of wisdom of going before God and checking your response and what you feel up against the spirit of God. Amen. So then the second thing that wisdom will do, wisdom brings prevention. Wisdom brings prevention. Wisdom will prevent you from engaging in self-destructive behavior. I'll say that again. Wisdom will prevent you from engaging in self-destructive behavior. Proverbs chapter number two, amen, verse number 16, ver, chap, I'm going to say chapter number two, verse number 12, and verse number 16. It says, to deliver thee from the way of the evil man, from the man that speaketh forward things. Then verse 16 says, to deliver thee from the strange woman, even from the stranger which flattereth with her words. Now watch what the message Bible says about the, with these two verses. They, good sense and insight, will keep you from making wrong turns or following bad directions. Wise friends will rescue you from the temptress, that smooth talking seductress. Now watch this, all right? It's going to prevent you. Proverbs 3 and 23 says, wisdom brings prevention. Then shall thou walk in thy way safely, and thy foot shall not stumble. The Message Bible says, 3 and 23 of Proverbs, you'll travel safely. You'll neither tire nor trip. An ounce of prevention is worth a pound of cure. And so sometimes it's better. Listen, you all, we're dealing with something right now, right? We're dealing with something right now. Amen. Wisdom tells us, amen, to ensure that we follow, amen, what's being asked, that we have great practices and that we do the things that we should do. Why? Because we want to walk safely. We want to ensure that we, amen, show that we walk by wisdom. Somebody say wisdom. Wisdom is very, 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 very important in this time. Amen. If you don't use wisdom, amen, then you'll have a problem with the third thing that wisdom would do, and that brings, wisdom brings prolonging. Amen. Wisdom will prolong your life. It will prolong your life. Proverbs 3, amen, 1 through 2 says, my son, forget not my law. But let thine heart keep my commandments for length of days and long life and peace shall they add to thee. All right. All right. It, 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 and then verse number eight of chapter three says it shall be health to thy navel and marrow to thy bones. Verse number 16 in chapter three says length of days is in her hand and in her left hand riches and honor. Y'all hear me. Amen. And so it's important. Now, it's very important. Amen. So it's important for you and I to know, amen, that if we obey wisdom, we can live long. That, that if we do the right things at the right time, we can live long. 
Amen. But we have to be wise enough, amen, to know how we ought to conduct ourselves, amen, in certain times and in certain situations. Amen. Wisdom, amen, does not always have to come from experience. You can take the wisdom from someone else. This is all that's this is all Solomon was giving us was wisdom, amen, from what he had already received from God. Amen. And he's trying to give it to his son and, and God had it written so that we can receive this same wisdom ourselves. Amen. And so it's important for you and I to understand that wisdom offers you long life as well as wealth and honor. Wisdom offers you long life as well as wealth and honor. Being wise reduces not just not just uh, 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 your situations and circumstances, but being wise reduce stress. <laughs> being wise reduces frustration because if I'm wise about doing something, then it <laughs> wisdom tells me, amen, to do this before I do that, to take care of responsibilities before I do pleasure. Why? Because pleasure is for that moment, but responsibility pay has its repercussions farther down the road. See, and that's the thing that the enemy gets us on. A wise individual understands that what I do today affects tomorrow. A person that's not wise, amen, will live for the moment and let and just let tomorrow fall through the cracks. And listen, I know we can't control tomorrow. And see, this is where people use things out of context. Oh, well, God said, don't take no thought for tomorrow. What you going to eat or drink? He knows that you have need. Yes, he does. But people take that so that they can live their life reckless. See, you, folk that's wise understand that there must be line upon line, precept upon precept, that you can't say, oh, I ain't worried about tomorrow, so I'm not going to work. I ain't worried about tomorrow, so I'm not going. I'm not going to store up nothing. I'm not going to worry about hard times. I'm going to let God deal with that. Well, the Bible also says if a man don't man don't work, he don't eat. The Bible also talks about a man who being wise and a man and adding to the things that God give to them. And so it's not important to know as much it is to know where to apply what you know. And see, this is this is why you need preaching, you need teaching. But here's we're in a season now to where you need to make sure that you're able to go into the word of God and study that word and read that word for yourself so that you can continue to live in wisdom and that you can continue to please God in your life. The fourth thing that that if we walk in wisdom, it brings us peace. It brings us peace. As you develop wisdom, you will enjoy a life of peace. All right, you'll enjoy a life of peace. Proverbs chapter number three, verse number 17, amen, talks about wisdom, amen. Her ways are ways of pleasantness. If you walk in wisdom, the ways of wisdom is ways of pleasantness and paths are, and her paths are peace. When thou liest down, verse number 24, when thou liest down, thou shalt not be afraid. Yea, thou shalt lie down and thy sleep shall be sweet. Why does wisdom give us peace? One reason is because when you first start getting wise, come on somebody, amen, wisdom first starts with you fearing God, all right? And if you fear God, then it's going to order the decisions you make. It's going to make sure, you're going to make sure that you're doing the things that are pleasing in his sight. And then as you please God, God gives you more understanding and wisdom on how to walk and to please him. Amen. It's very important. Amen. That we remember that the English version, uh, 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 the today's English version says wisdom can make your life pleasant and lead you safely through it. You will not be afraid. Verse number 24, when you go to bed and you will sleep sleep soundly through the night. Amen. I want to be able to go to sleep and know that I've done everything according to wisdom so that I can rest at night and that I've done everything that I can. And let me tell you something. Once you do everything you can do, you can't do nothing else. But you ought to be able, amen, to do it, amen, to the point to where you have confidence that you have pleased God. And that's the bigger thing. I want to be confident that all that I've done, I have pleased God. Amen. And then the next thing wisdom will cause to happen in your life, wisdom can bring prosperity. Many of us are not broke because we didn't have. Many folk are broke because they weren't wise with what they received. I, I, I ought to get some amens on that. Amen. Many of us are not broke because we had never had. 
Many people are broke because they were not wise with the things that they have received. Some of y'all have had a whole lot of money come through your hands. Many of you all have had a whole lot of uh, 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 blessings that God have blessed you with. I know people who have inherited houses and lands but didn't know what to do with them and sold them for little or nothing because they did not have wisdom. Amen. You got to you got you got to you, to, you got to obtain wisdom. And listen, everybody here's wisdom for you right here. Everybody don't know everything. And see what happens, you getting advice in certain areas from people who are not wise or successful in the area that you are trying to get advice in. You don't go get advice if you're married from someone who has been divorced five or six times and don't know what it means to have a successful marriage, they might be able to tell you what not to do, but they probably won't be able to tell you what to do because people who now, if that person, you know, ever became successful, then they might be able to tell you what they did to be successful. But many times you are listening to somebody who telling you what they think instead of what they know. Successful people are going to tell you what they know because they have already achieved what you are trying to achieve. And so then wisdom tells me that well, no matter what it might be, I can have a person in my life that is an expert in one area but may not be an expert in another area. And some of y'all got one-stop shopping. And I said that again, some of y'all got one-stop shopping. You trying to get everything from one person, all right? And they giving you bad advice and that's, and you just taking it and you're not wise. And you're wondering why nothing works. Amen. You have to learn how, amen, to find the right source for the situation that you're dealing with, and that's called and that's called wisdom, amen. You you're not gonna your finances are not gonna get better getting advice from somebody who don't have control of their own finances. You'll never prosper, amen. You'll never have a savings. You'll never because they can't comprehend and don't even understand the reason you need a savings. And when you find people who don't even have an understanding or a reason for it, come on somebody, amen. You you gonna find yourself messed up. Right? is we got to get out of this one-stop shop. And I'm going to tell you why many people one-stop shop. The many of us, we're living in the last days where people heap to themselves teachers, meaning they got certain people they want to hear. Amen. And you want many people today, amen, and they're not wise. They want to hear from people who agree with everything that they, that they feel. Amen. And, and see, when you start doing that, you sitting, you setting yourself up to not go anywhere. You're setting yourself up to be on a merry-go-round of going in circle after circle, and you're going to end up frustrated. So we understand that when we operate in wisdom, it will bring prosperity, all right? Uh, uh, and we'll look at this later on down the road. But Proverbs chapter number three, verse number two says, again, for length of days and long life and peace shall they add to thee. In verse number 16, length of days is in the right hand, and in the left hand is riches and honor. Now watch this. Wisdom automatically brought Solomon riches. Solomon, when asked by God, what is it that you want? He asked, Lord, give me, amen, the ability to go in and out before your people, meaning give me the wisdom. I'm a child. I'm a young man to judge your people. When he, wisdom got, when he asked for wisdom, God gave it to him. And then God said, because you didn't ask for riches, there's no, there's no way you can be wise and not receive riches because a wise person, amen, handles and conducts themselves, amen, in a manner to where they can be blessed. And so God then turned around and blessed him and say, since you didn't ask for this, I'm going to give you riches and, and I'm going to give you uh, wealth along with wisdom. And so with wisdom comes wealth. All right. Now, now again, the, 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 the English version Bible reads those. My teaching will give you a long and prosperous, uh, prosperous life. Wisdom offers you long life as well as wealth and honor. All right. So the next thing wisdom gives us is prosperity. Next after that 
it gives us poise. All right, poise, meaning it causes us to have, amen. Some of y'all, y'all don't know what poise is. You you like this. You 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 like this. You up and down. You you you. you um, we don't know. We don't know what 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 move we gonna catch you in. I mean, some days you you good as could be. The next day, you some of y'all bipolar, schizophrenic, or something because you don't have no control over your spirit. You see, wisdom is going to give you pause. Wisdom gives you ease in every situation. See, see, all of this, let, 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 me, let me say this, amen. <laughs> let me say this, that's right. You got to ask for wisdom. And I'm going to show you a scripture when we close here tonight. But, but let, let, let me say this, is, is if, you can't, if you can't get control of your spirit, see, all this new stuff is, uh, I'm about to flash out. I, uh, uh, my son, my son used to always. I'm about to flash, and it took me a while to kind of catch what he meant by it. And what it means is a situation can make you turn from calm to just flat out uh, erratic behavior due to something that pops up in your life. This stuff ought not be so for people who are filled with the Holy Ghost. And a led of the Spirit of God. Anybody that's led of the Spirit of God, amen, has control over their spirit. All right? When you let the Holy Ghost work in you. There's no such thing, amen, as flashing out in the Holy Ghost. Ain't no such thing as, amen, uh, putting a Holy Ghost on the shelf and then stepping in the flesh to take care of your business and then stepping back into the spirit. Amen. All when people talk about, don't make me step in my flesh. I say, no, you feel a backslide. Ain't no such thing as you can't step in the flesh and then just step out of it like it was nothing. No, if you backslide, it takes some time for you to get back where you were. You just don't recover and recoup just like that. Amen. And so it's going to give you some poise. It's going to help you get yourself together. It's not going to give you cockiness or arrogance, but it gives you a quiet confidence. I didn't say it gives you a, did you hear that? A quiet confidence. All right. Proverbs chapter number three, verse number 26 through 27 says, for the Lord shall be thy confidence and shall keep thy foot from being taken. All right. Then it says, we'll hold not good from them to whom it is due when it is in the power of thine hand to do it. See, the Lord shall be thy confidence. See, people who know. And this is why, y'all, you got to stop trying to fight battles and all this stuff. You And, and worried about who for you, worried about who not for you, worried about this and that. Just please God. And then have confidence because God is your help and your strength. This is why the Bible talks about vengeance in mind, said the Lord, I shall repay. You didn't see Moses running around trying to get vengeance on people. Most of the time, God was the one, amen, that was protecting Moses and watching Moses' back and protecting Moses' name. Listen, you're going to have people that talk good about you. You're going to have people that talk bad about you. You're going to have situations and circumstances. But you got to have a confidence in you, amen, that keeps you, amen, quiet, amen, and, and hold your peace and let the Lord deal with your situations and your circumstances, amen. You just got to know how to have a confidence in God that can't nobody understand, amen. The old folk used to say, amen, that you have that peace, that within you, they use the scripture, the peace that surpasses understanding. Amen. And you have an understanding that everything is going to be all right. Amen. So I don't have to make a whole lot of noise because in my mind, I'm settled. Amen. That there is no weapon that formed against me that shall prosper. All things working together for the good of them that love the Lord. This is a quiet confidence. So I ain't flipping out. I ain't spazzing out. I ain't falling out. I ain't crying. I ain't murmuring. I ain't complaining with a quiet confidence. I'm going to give God the praise and I'm going to magnify him. Why? Because I know from whence all my help come from. All of my help comes from the Lord so I can praise him and I don't have to wait till the battle is over. I can go ahead and shout in the middle of it. Why? Because I have
have enough and have been through enough and I have enough wisdom to know that if he had not failed me yet, God is not in the failing business, that he got this under control too. And I got only one place I'm coming out on and that means I'm coming out on top because God cannot let me down because I trust in him. I trust in him. Some men trust in horses, some men in chariot, but I put my trust in the name of the Lord for the name of the Lord is a strong tower and the righteous, they run in it and they, they are made safe. If he helped me through Katrina, he going to help me. He helped me through the flood. He going to help me through the COVID-19 and any other COVID-20, 25, 30, whatever happens, God is greater. I got enough experience with him that gives me enough wisdom to be calm because everything is in the hands of the Lord and everything is going to be all right. I just believe that. And that's what wisdom tells me. Wisdom tells me that everything is going to be all right. I just believe it. Amen. And God's going to prove to the world who he really is. He's going to prove to the world that without him, they can do nothing. The world is scrambling. God is on the throne. Can I say that again? The world is scrambling, but God is on the throne. Amen. And people that know their God shall be mighty and do exploits. I said, people that know him right now, we're not panicking. This too shall pass. I said, this too shall pass. All this did is made us love him more. All this did is making us trust him more. All this doing is making us commit ourselves more. All this is doing to me is letting me understand that if God, amen, don't do it, you can't trust in nobody else to do it at all. Amen. And I'm excited about that. So then wisdom gives you a certain calmness about everything. Proverbs 3 and 26 says, for the Lord shall be thy confidence. Amen. And that is, I'm telling you, church, the Lord has to be our confidence. Amen. It's important for you and I to know that and to see that. Amen. Amen. This is not new. Amen. God protecting his people. Because here's the second thing. If you have poise, the next thing God is going to do, he's going to protect you. Wisdom will bring protection unto you. All right. Amen. In Proverbs, amen. Chapter number four, verse number six, wisdom will keep you safe. Proverbs four and six, forsake her not, talking about wisdom, and she shall preserve thee. Love her and she shall keep thee, talking about wisdom. The message Bible says it this way, never walk away from wisdom. She guards your life. Love her. She keeps her eye on you. Did y'all hear that? The English version, amen, says it this way. Do not abandon wisdom and she will protect you. Love her and she will keep you safe. Amen. There's protection in doing things the right way. There's protection in understanding, amen, that wisdom, amen, gives you the understanding along with it to do the right thing. Without every wise individual has understanding because without understanding, you ain't wise. The next thing it gives you, it gives you precision. Wisdom gives you the ability to take the precise number of steps in the precise direction at the precise pace. Say that again. Wisdom gives you the ability to take the precise number of steps in the precise direction at the precise pace, right? It gives you the understanding on when to do it, how to do it, how fast to go. See, some of y'all don't believe God can talk to you like that. Sometimes God say, wait, that means you're moving too fast because he wants you to be precise. Sometimes God tells you, hey amen, speed up. Come on, you should have done this by now. Why? Because he's trying to help you catch up with your blessing, catch up with your purpose. Proverbs 4 and 12 says, when thou goest, thy steps shall not, be shall, shall not be straightened. When thou goest, thy steps shall not be straightened. And when thou runnest, thou shalt not stumble. The NIV says it this way. When you walk, your steps shall not be hampered. When you run, you will not stumble. Why? Because wisdom. Somebody say wisdom. 
Somebody say wisdom. Then the next thing wisdom gives you is prudence. Wisdom helps you exercise caution when you need to exercise caution. I'll say it again. Wisdom helps you exercise caution when you need to exercise caution. Listen, y'all, there are a lot of people right now that's getting ill because they won't exercise caution. You see, wisdom teaches you to exercise caution when you need to exercise caution. You see, <laughs> a wise person don't have to burn themselves if they see everybody touching something that's hot and burning themselves. You see, a wise individual knows that if it happened to them, there's no exemption that it could happen to me unless God decides. But if God ain't told me to do it, or if God ain't told me that he was going to, that don't worry about it at all, then I better act with some wisdom. Because when it rains, amen, God could stop the rain from raining on me, and I could be the only person walking outside in a hurricane, and the wind don't affect me, and the rain don't affect me, and the thunder and the lightning don't bother me, amen, when God's covering me from it, amen, but if God decides I'm sending a hurricane, and everybody under the hurricane gonna get wet, because the Bible declares he causes it to rain upon the just and the unjust, then I better use a little wisdom and get me an umbrella. Amen. Because you'll make your own self have to suffer things. Amen. Because you are trying to make God do something that God is saying, this is what it's going to be right now. Use the right precautions for it. Amen. I, I mean, I remember being, amen, new in the church. I figured when you get the Holy Ghost and everything, amen, stuff that happened to other people shouldn't happen to me. I learned real quick. That sometimes, amen, things happen, and whether you're in the church or out the church, they'll affect you. I told the church the other day, amen, and, and when they flooded in Baton Rouge, amen, man, they had a guy come around with a with a on a on a, on a three wheeler or four wheeler, and he said, hey, he was blowing, making a bunch of noise. I got up, opened the door. Amen. Went out there and that man said, look now, he said, they got water, water on the back road back there. It's coming this way. Y'all need to get up, evacuate, get out of there right now. Well, I'm a preacher, man. I'm out. I'm, I'm Holy Ghost filled. I'm, I'm, I'm fire baptized. I'm baptized in Jesus name. I speak in tongues as the spirit gives the utterance. I say, man, I'm about to go back in here and go to sleep. <laughs> we all went back in there and went to sleep. And when we woke up the next morning, the water was waiting on us. <laughs> See, wisdom was not that God didn't want to help me. He did. He told me to go ahead because I'm getting ready to do this. I sent you a messenger to tell you to get on out of the way because the water was coming that direction. Come on, somebody. Amen. But I didn't listen to Amen. The guy, I didn't use wisdom. I just felt like, God, you got to do something. Let me explain something. God don't have to do nothing but what God want to do. Amen. And what you got to be careful, amen, with is understanding that sometimes God got to do what he got to do. Amen. And it might affect you, but it won't hurt you. Amen. Sometimes you got to make life adjustments. Sometimes you got to do different things. Amen. Just like everybody else do. See, this is where the children of the world are wiser than the children of the light is we don't we don't plan for nothing. We just think everything's supposed to mysteriously happen. Right. Faith is not you walking blindly. Amen. And 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 just running around with your eyes closed, believing that God's going to protect you of everything. Faith without works is dead being alone by itself. Faith is only needed in things that you cannot see your way out of. Right. For faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. Faith that should be used in impossible situations. Are you hearing me? Amen. But when it is possible, do everything that you can when it's possible. Amen. Then when you can't do nothing else, you can't help but to believe and trust God. 
Amen. We're in a situation right now that's changing every day. The folk don't know what's happening. You don't know what's happening. The, one day they tell you this, the next day they tell you that. It might be over in two weeks. They said some people said two months. Somebody said six months. This is a volatile situation. It's up and down. You don't know what's going on. So guess what? Wisdom tells me now it's time for me not to worry. Wisdom say put this in the hands of God because you can't do nothing about it. Amen. They can't do nothing about it. About it, but God ain't never had a problem that he can't do anything about. With man, this is impossible. But with God, all things are possible. So then wisdom helps you, number nine, gives you prudence. Wisdom helps you exercise caution when you need to exercise caution. It gives you the sense to hold back when you need to hold back. To go forward when you need to go forward. Proverbs 8 and 12 says, I, wisdom, dwell with prudence. Look at that. Wisdom dwells with prudence and find out knowledge of the witty inventions. All right? All right? Now, now let me make it a little plainer. Amen. The English version, amen, says it this way. The English verse said, I am Lady Wisdom and I live next to sanity. <laughs> Knowledge and discretion live just down the street. That's the message Bible. All right. All right. And then the English version said, I am wisdom and I have insight. Let me say that again. I am wisdom and I have insight. I have knowledge and sound judgment. <laughs> Ain't that something? I am wisdom and I have insight. I have knowledge and sound judgment. You see, some of you all, your judgment ain't sound. I want God to be in everything I do. And I want to glorify God in everything that I do. But I want to make sure it's God I'm trying to glorify and not trying to do something to draw attention to me. And see, that's a very, very thin line. When it becomes all about you, where's God? How does this, the question that everybody ought to ask themselves, how, do, how does this glorify God? How does this glorify God? I told somebody the other day, and I'll say this here online. Amen. The church needs to stop saying that this is persecution to the church. This, this, this situation that we're in, this is not persecution to the church. Oh, they just trying to persecute us. Well, they must be trying to perse persecute, amen, the restaurants. They must be trying to persecute the bowling alleys. They must be trying to persecute every other business and every other thing that they're asking, amen, to shut down and not make money and to not do what it's supposed to be doing. Amen. This, I mean, for you to call this persecution, you, this is a, that would be a slap in the face to the apostles that really suffer persecution. They ain't not once told us we can't call the name of Jesus. They ain't not once told us we can't preach the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. They ain't not once, amen, told us, amen, that if we have church, we're going to be beaten and killed and stoned and everything else. They have not once told us that. So let's stop, let's stop trying to make this be about something that it's not about. Amen. What this does is it's going to show Amen. What has been taught, what has been preached, what has been put into the hearts of the people of God. I'm telling you, I have a lot of confidence in the people I pastor. Amen. I don't, I ain't called them and told them to be faithful or nothing. I ain't had to tell them to continue to do nothing. I have enough confidence. Amen. That if I've preached to them the word and if I've taught them and if I've set an example, come on somebody. Amen. That they are going to know how to handle them themselves and to keep themselves in this hour. Come on somebody, amen. This is not a persecution against the church. This is an event that has happened and is causing an issue for the church, but I'm not being persecuted right now. Come on somebody, amen. Amen. This is not persecution. This is an inconvenience. This is a situation and a problem that God is going to help. All we got to do is just get to praying and believe in God. Amen. But right now, what the church need to let the world know is that we got enough in us to make it through this, that we still got hope in all of this, that God's going to bless us through all of this. Amen. And show the world where our wisdom is. Amen. And where our confidence is. Why we 
we can have poise and why we can be calm in this time because we're not looking to the White House. We're not looking to the governor's mansion. We're not looking for nobody to help and keep us. Amen. We're going to be, amen, and try to do what we can to be obedient to the laws of the land, but we're not trusting in them. They asking us to pray for them. Amen. Our job is to pray. Come on, somebody. Operate with wisdom. Give them a reason. Amen. To say what is going on with the church. Amen. And I'm telling you, if those that's going to believe God, our church coming back greater than it was. I'm just telling you now, I got enough wisdom to know it's coming back greater than it is. This here is a setup. This is a setup for a revival. This is a setup to let the world know that there's some things out there, amen, that if God don't do it, it won't get taken care of. It's a setup to let the world know that it is he that healed all our diseases. It's a setup to let the world know that our God is still alive. We just got to keep operating and walking in wisdom. Come on, somebody. I just believe it. Amen. I said, I just believe it, that God is greater than this situation. Amen. I believe it. Amen. And I believe we're going to see a revival after this. Come on, somebody. Hallelujah. I believe it. Amen. And I am not losing no sleep. I just, I'm just not doing it. I'm not losing no sleep. God's going to protect every last one of the saints because I'm praying that he do. Amen. God's going to bless every one of the saints because I believe that he is. Come on, somebody. Hallelujah. Amen. That he will not let, amen, his people want for anything. Amen. The Bible said it this way. I was young, but now, and now I'm old, but I've never seen a righteous forsaken or their seed begging for bread. Come on, somebody. This is why. This is the wisdom I sit with. This is the. This is the reason why I get up every morning. Amen. And have a feeling within my heart that everything is gonna be all right. I just feel it. I said. I, I said. I just feel. It. I need some folk to say. I just believe everything's gonna be all right. It's gonna be okay. I'm telling you, church. It's gonna be okay. Amen. Let's not make this something that's not. Come on, somebody. Hallelujah. Amen. Some folk want persecution. When they get it, they ain't going to be able to handle it. Come on, somebody. Hallelujah. Amen. This is a situation. That's it. This is a situation. Amen. That has happened to the world. Amen. But now the church has to show the world how to respond to these situations. Listen, God's, God's seeing what's in us. When persecution hit the early church, here's your wisdom. Amen. And they scattered them abroad. Amen. Stuff didn't stop happening. It picked up. Can I say that again? When they got scattered abroad, stuff didn't stop happening. It actually started picking up. Because the gospel got preached everywhere they went. Now it's time for you to meet your neighbor. Now it's time for you to witness to somebody that you ain't had the opportunity to witness to. Now it's time for you, amen, to take the time and to get your get prayer back in your house. Now it's time for you to show what you got. It's going to be all right. I'm getting ready to stop here. Amen. And, and, and so I want, lastly, wisdom, it pays off. It pays off. I mentioned uh, uh, all these benefits because I want to say that you've got to have wisdom. And I want you to know that wisdom is available to anybody that wants it. Wisdom is available to anybody that wants it. Proverbs 9 and 12 said, Thou be wise, thou shalt be wise for thyself. But if thou scornest, thou shalt bear it alone. Proverbs uh, uh, 9 and 12 amplified version of the Bible says if you are wise you are wise for yourself if you scorn you will you alone will bear it and pay the penalty the English version says you are the one who will profit if you have wisdom and if you reject it you are the one who will suffer does that make sense if you reject wisdom you are going to be the one that suffer but if, you, but if you are the one who will profit if you have wisdom. The message Bible makes it even clear. Live wisely and wisdom will permeate your life. Mock life and life will mock you. 
And I'm telling you, you better make sure that when you're just doing stuff, that God's behind it. So, again, wisdom begins with the fear of the Lord. Proverbs 9 and 10, if you want wisdom, you got to start there. The fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. You start on the path of wisdom by putting God first. The wisest thing you'll ever do hmm, is give God the place he deserves in your life. And I say that again, the wisest thing you will ever do is to give God the place he deserves in your life. That word, the fear, that word, the fear of the Lord, that word fear means literally respect. How do you apply reverential respect for the Lord? First, you, first, first, if you've never put your faith in God, that's where it starts, right? You got to first put your faith in God as being, if you don't hear, you ain't saved. The, the, the first part of wisdom is for you to fear God and to put your faith in him, in the Lord Jesus Christ as being the one who came, died for your sins, rose again. And you got to believe that first. That's where it starts, right? The first step to doing it, it says Hebrews 11 and 6, but without faith, it is impossible to please him. For he that cometh to God must first believe that he is and that he's a rewarder of them that diligently seek him. Wisdom starts right there. Wisdom starts by saying, I must fear God. Wisdom starts by saying, I have to reverence God. Wisdom starts by saying that I need God to save me. And if you believe that the Lord exists and that he rewards those who diligently seek him, then you must, in, you must, in response to the gospel, repent of your sins and be baptized, every one of you, in the name of Jesus Christ for the remission of sins. And you shall receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. Wisdom starts there first. There is no wisdom in being unsaved when you know that there is a Savior. Remember what wisdom was? It's knowing to do the right thing and doing it. Right? And so you can't accept God's wisdom in parts of his word and reject it in others. And 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 peace and, and, and be at peace with God. You see, and people want to. They want to they want they want to accept certain aspects of the word, but not all of it. And after you've experienced God's grace, amen, start giving God the lordship of your life. When God saves you, he becomes your Lord. So after you repent, after you get baptized, after you get filled with the Holy Ghost, amen, you got to give God, amen, uh, uh, the place of being your Lord. Amen. You've heard this before and I said to you now, the problem with many of you, you have not transitioned God from being Savior and, uh, to him being Lord. And that's why you have a problem with holiness because you, you haven't transitioned. That's why you have a problem obeying the word because you hadn't transitioned. You, you still using him for every time you get in trouble. Lord, get me out of this. You still using him as a savior. Lord, if you get me out of this one, if you do this for me, God, you still using him as a savior. Well, God said, when I save you, then I become your Lord. You are not your own. You are bought with a price. Somebody say wisdom. Wisdom tells me, amen, that if I couldn't save myself and he paid the ransom, then I no longer belong to me. I belong to God. So I must glorify God in everything that I do. You got to allow his spirit to take control and respect what he wants to do, amen, with you and respect what he wants you to do. And so how can I, how can, how can you and I put wisdom to work in our lives on a daily basis? One, believe in consequences. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. Can I say that again? You have to believe in consequences. See, you, you, I'm going to say that again because some people still ain't got it. You have to believe in consequences. That everything you do has a consequence. Proverbs 6 and 27. All right. Uh, uh, we're going to go there. But for every action. Can I say this? For every action, there's an equal and opposite reaction. It's called a consequence. Proverbs 6.27, can a man take fire in his bosom and his clothes not be burned? One of the messages, amen, you'll hear repeated again and again is, will be that behavior produces 
corresponding results, good or bad. Behavior produces corresponding results, whether they are good or whether they are bad. Proverbs teaches that you can you can count on consequences for whatever you do. Whatever you do, you can count on a consequence. Whatever you do, you can count on a consequence. Examples, Proverbs 13 and 11. All right. The consequence of working to earn and save money is growth of your money. Right. Proverbs 13 and 11. Wealth gotten by vanity shall be diminished, but he that gather it by labor shall increase. All right. Amplified version says it this way. Wealth not earned, but won in haste or unjustly or from the production of things for vain uh, or detrimental use. Such riches will dwindle away, but he who gathers little by little will increase in his riches. The message Bible says it this way. Easy come, easy go. But steady diligence pays off. You see, when you don't have no wisdom, it come fast and it leave fast. When you get it wrong, it come fast and you get it and it leave fast. Proverbs 13 and 18. This is the direct consequence of heeding reproof or reprimand is ultimately going to be honored. Conversely, the direct consequence of refusing to take instruction comes poverty and shame. Proverbs 13 and 18, poverty and shame shall be to him that refuseth instruction. You're not wise. But he that regarded reproof shall be honored. The NIV says, he, he who ignores discipline comes to poverty and shame. But whoever heeds correction is honored. The message Bible says, refuse discipline and end up homeless. Embrace correction and live an honored life. Proverbs 14 and 23, in all labor there's profit, but the talk of the lips tended only to penury. <laughs> Let the message Bible tell you right. Hard work always pays off. Mere talk puts no bread on the table. The English version says, work and you will earn a living. If you sit around talking, you will be poor. Amen. Secondly, learn by example. As we get ready to close, learn by example. He that walketh with wise men shall be wise, but a companion of fools shall be destroyed. Watch the company you'll keep. A wise person watches the company that they keep. A wise individual knows and studies and looks at, am I wasting my time? Is this person benefiting me? When you got somewhere you're trying to go and, and what you're trying to do, you start looking at who's around you and and are they a ladder to me or are they are are, are they are they quicksand to me? Is this person somebody that can help me go where I'm trying to go or is this person sinking me back down into ways that I shouldn't be in and things back to things that I said I wasn't going to do no more? Is this person aiding me, helping me to go forward, or is this person aiding the bad habits that I? that I put down? Are they introducing me back into an environment that I don't want to be in no more? Mm -hmm. So he that walketh with wise men shall be wise, but a companion of fools shall be destroyed. You got to be careful because some people ain't going to ever change. Then I be says he who walks with the wise grows wise, but a companion of uh, uh, fools suffers harm. The English version says, keep company with the wise and you will become wise. If you make friends with stupid people, you will be ruined. Let me say this. Experience is a great teacher. But you don't have to learn every lesson in life by personal experience. Learn from others especially from those who have gone down a similar path and made some mistakes and are willing to help you avoid making the same ones. Follow their example, get their advice. And then third, immerse yourself in God's wisdom. This is the last thing you got to do. Immerse yourself in God's wisdom. How you do that? Study God's word. Study God's word.
Psalms 119 and 11 says, The word, thy word have I hid in my heart, that I might not sin against thee. Conclusion, no doubt, we'd all like to be considered wise people. Right? How many people want to be considered a wise person? No one wants to leave a legacy of a fool. But to be wise, you have to, you have to do wise things. Wise people are thinking people. Wise people take their time. They seek advice. They seek information. They study the problems before they make decisions. A wise person takes time to make a decision so they don't have to regret the decision. A fool makes a decision quickly but then does not want to accept the responsibility of the decision. A wise person weighs every thing out because they know that one decision one decision can cause you years of heartache one so wise people don't take decisions and make decisions lightly a wise person thinks about the coming consequences. And they have an understanding of what making the wrong decision can do. So, walk in the wisdom of God, not just in the wisdom of man. I've had men give me bad decisions, bad wisdom. I've had people tell me, if I was you, I would do this. And I've lived to wish I never would have listened to them. <laughs> so now, I can receive from anybody, but I make my decision according to prayer, the word of God, and through the multitude of counsel. Can I tell somebody as we go, stop using, stop one, stop shopping. When you're trying to make a decision. And be careful with people. That don't want you to get advice from nobody but them. Be careful with people. Who feel like they the smartest person in the world. And ain't nobody got it like them. And don't nobody know like they know. And if you ain't with them. You ain't with nobody. Be careful with people like that. Some of y'all messed up because you can't hear no other, no voice but one voice. But in a multitude of counsel, there's safety. I'm not telling you nothing I don't know. Every leader on here will tell you that I seek counsel even before I make decisions. And so, Lord, make me wise. Make me wise. There's wealth and wisdom. There's poise in being wise. There's protection in being wise. There's wealth in being wise. There's precision in being wise. My days will be long if I'm wise. I'll be healthy if I'm wise. God, we love you tonight. I want multitude of counsel. Lord, help us to be wise individuals. Help us in this hour to walk upright. For a fool is known by the multitude of words. It's not about how much I say. But Lord, make me, God, an individual that when I open my mouth, I have something to say. I don't want to be known to just be a person that talks a lot. But I want my words to bring value and to add value. In the name of Jesus. For the Bible says that if any of us 
lack wisdom. Anybody lack wisdom, you ought to ask the Lord that give it to everyone that ask of him. God, give me wisdom. That's James 1 and 5. If any of you lack wisdom, let him ask of God that give it to all men liberally and upbraid it not and it shall be given unto him. And don't ask wavering. Just say, Lord, give me wisdom. Hey, for wisdom from heaven. And if he can give it to Solomon, are y'all hearing me? If he can give it to Solomon, he's no respecter of persons. He can give it to me. Give me wisdom, Lord. Give me wisdom in Jesus' name. All right. God bless you all. God bless you all. I hope, amen, that the word of the Lord that was taught tonight helps you. And I hope you see the value of wisdom. It starts with God. Keep God first. Keep God first. Honor the Lord first in every area of your life. Respect him first. And then you can call on him and be sure that he's going to answer. 